What is your main takeaway from what we've gotten so far? Messaging is very important here. They're telling us that, yes, uh, they have held policy steady, um, but they're also, and they're pausing to give more time to assess the economy outlook and risk. This is what the Federal Reserve just did, right? There's a new thing you can do, apparently, as a a central banker. You can uh, keep the door wide open to rate hikes. In fact, even say that further tightening may be required, which the RBA is saying today, but not actually take the step just now. Inflation is still too high. It's seen persisting for some time. They are resolute in returning CPI to target. They will They will do what's needed. Now, they're paying close attention to labor costs and price settings. Right now, what you see is an inflation rate on the headline in the latest monthly number for the, uh, for, uh, for the RBA to look at is 5.6 percent. The peak was 7.8 percent. But the core number has not come down anywhere near as much. They're still well above the 2 to 3 percent target. Recently, the uh, the RBA deputy governor, Michelle Bullock, said the 3.6 percent record low rate of unemployment may have to get as high as 4.5 percent to really bring down inflation. Uh, wages growth is still consistent with the inflation target. Now, that's interesting because last chart I looked, at a Bloomberg chart, it looked like wage growth was still going up on a year-over-year basis. Uh, household consumption remains in... Uh, uncertain, significant uncertainty, uh, and the path to a soft land remain, remains a narrow one. A lot of that has to be the housing market. It has to be, I mentioned it earlier, you said this mortgage cliff. The more they hike rates, the more when you turn over, if you're an Australian homeowner, when you move out of a fixed yeah. rate mortgage into an adjustable rate mortgage, suddenly your monthly costs are a lot higher. The housing market, though, a lot of people say is okay. still relatively strong. Home prices are still rising. So the door is wide open to more hikes. We don't know exactly why they didn't hike, but when we finally hear from Phil Lowe in the next couple of days, maybe we'll get some more insight. I mean, it's all about the forward-looking language, sure, but then you look at the time lags to understand the impact of some of the rate hikes that they have done, right? So this is something that the governor points to in the statement. Is there something idiosyncratic about the Australia story when it comes to these lags, or would you say that it kind of fits in with what we're seeing in the United States and in Europe in terms of you do a hike and then X or Y months after you get a proper sense of the impact? Well, yes. I think what's different today that is, to me, an, an axiom that's just gotten a little bit worn out, perhaps. Look how quickly we saw rate hikes affect mortgage rates in the U.S. Look how hot the Australian housing market was or the New Zealand housing market. And that's one of the things that the the central bankers knew they had to bring down. Now, is there more to come? And again, housing is an example that's right in front of us. Uh, are, there, are there longer lags than that? Certainly there are, but I think that... Uh, Remember this, too. If you kept your rates low for a long time, even too long, we've got... What's the lag effect of that? The lag effect of that was that you kept stimulus in the economy maybe longer than you should have. So at the same time, are we still seeing some of that keeping these economies afloat, particularly in the U.S., maybe also in Australia? And now we'll have to assess how long the lags are on the other side. It's one of the toughest parts, I'm sure, for a central banker to do. But again, it seems to me this is a very hawkish hold by the RBA.